Hi, my name is Marcello Bikeki with Straight Score, and today I am going to show you some new features that are coming out in Shoot Pro 116. First off, I'd like to show you that the Earned Yardage Report now respects Big 50 rules. So if we go to Reports, number 7, Earned Yardage, select our Handicap Event and select Find, we can now see that it is automatically detected that we only have one place that needs to be punched with a score of 50. Also, this grid down here in the bottom now shows the correct table. So if we go ahead and run this earned yardage report, we get the normal message, remember to save, and now we have two shooters who shot a 50, and therefore they would be punched a half yard according to the Big 50 rules. Similar thing applies for the PITA, so if we were to switch this shoot over to a PITA shoot, change that handicap to 100 targets, close out of that, reopen it, and let's go edit one of our scores. So we'll just duplicate everything. So now if we go into earned yardage, select event number two, we can see down here that it says PITA rules applied and it tells us that a score of 97 or above automatically earns a half yard, or automatically earns a yard. Our table has updated with the PITA rules as well, so when we click find, it knows that we have one place that needs to be punched, one yard. So then when we click run, it now has successfully detected and ran an earned yardage for the PITA rules. Next is a rather small change, but it's something that I feel that will make everybody's lives better. So in classification, squatting, and cashiering, if we were to open somebody and close them out, and let's say that we need to reopen them, we can now press Control Z and it will automatically reload the last ATA number that was opened. So one more time, I'm just going to do member by name, select a random name, I'm going to click done, if I press control Z, that number now reloads, when I click find, of course it pulls up that shooter. In 116 you can also print out a individualized payoff summary. So if we go to payoff utils, go to number 15, pay detail, click filter ATA, and I will enter in a number, if we click run, now the events are listed with the score and the shooter is able to take a copy of this report with them. In 116 we also have a new way to display the shooter pay summary. The way that it is traditionally broken down is each event has its own subtotal and then to the left there's the grand total. We have now added the no detail feature which removes the event summary and allows you to fit a lot more data on just a single sheet of paper. Or in this case, since this is a fairly large tournament, two sheets of paper. In 116, now if you go to Utilities, number 4, Network Tools, and go to Show Connections, it actually does show you the workstations that are connected, what program they are currently accessing, and when they were last seen on the network. When a client disconnects, they do count, disappear from this list, but there's this new feature where you can view the access logs and it'll tell you what computers accessed what programs at what time. So if you ever have any suspicion that somebody is on your network who shouldn't be, then you can find out just by looking through the access log. Now it should be noted that the access log does only contain 10,000 records at a maximum. In 116, we've also made a lot of changes to ensure that common user errors cannot take place. For example, loading a pre-squad file after some people are entered. So, for example, here we have 10 people entered. If we go to file menu number 12, pre-squad, open the try to open the pre-squad file. It alerts us that we have shooters who are cashiered and that we are not allowed to load pre-squad data on top of people who are cashiered. Another common issue that we have prevented is when people clear out the tournament name but do not end the shoot. 3S will now alert you 
that there is an invalid tournament configuration. There is no tournament date, no tournament name, but event data is set. We have also done some work, so if there are networking issues, you are now able to run the network diagnostics, set the her server host name, or open Team Viewer. If we go to set server host name, we can say that this is the server, and it's going to give us a suggest action. We're going to say yes, and now 3S has reopened with the correct network configuration. The other thing that it allows you to do is on the client computers, you can click the find button and it'll automatically locate the name of the server. However, in this case, I do not have a second computer running 3S as the server, so I cannot really demonstrate this feature. However, there is more on this in the manual. We have also created several new ways for you to apply discounted targets. We now offer per event whole shoot and an option where if a shooter declares discounted targets at classification, they are locked into discounted targets and that cannot be changed by the cashier. For more information on this, I have linked a video in the description below, as well as chapter 11 in the manual, where we go into some advanced features with 3S. We have a full write-up including flowcharts, demonstrating how all of the discounted targets work. We also have an exciting feature that I am very happy to have. When we go to print receipt, we now have a historical record of what people have paid for. So here, if we double click on this historical receipt, it opens up as a PDF and we can print it out. So now we have a full log of every receipt of everybody who is cashiered throughout the entire tournament. Also within reprint receipt, the sort by name now also allows you to search. So if we were to look for Batty, it automatically filters down to this one record and we can also open it and print it out. Another new change is that print scores automatically keeps track and calculates what your next starting squad will be. So if I were to hit print, close out of this, and then go back to print scores for event one, it automatically is calculated that event that squad 13 will be our next sheet. We have also introduced a new breakage finder report. So if we go underneath finance, tournament finance, find breakage, I'm going to select the second event and now we select our different purses. So here we ran a yardage purse. So that is going to be paid off into yardage purse or jackpot purse because of the way that I ran it will be underneath a purse. A Great Eastern purse will be underneath six way. Our Lewis will be underneath Lewis and our fifties will be underneath fifties. We can go ahead and click find and then it gives us our breakage. So here underneath purse, I can see that I did not run it underneath purse, but actually ran it underneath special purse. If I click find breakage again, it now gives us our breakage. It also color codes it according to the ATA rules, which is a half percent is allowed to be kept. We can also print this report out, which gives us a summary of all of our breakages, just like we saw on that main report. In 116, we have made a lot of changes for PITA rules. So for example, if we go into classification and look up a shooter, if they have not paid their dues, it now appears that the PITA dues have expired, just like it does for the ATA. Now, if we were to look up somebody who is up to date, such as K, our suggested averages are now based off of the last 1,000 targets according to PITA rules. We have also added in a new feature, which allows you to set a manager password. Now we're going to go to setup tournament number one, and we can enter in an administrator password. Now, if I switch over to a 
virtual machine and go into utilities I can come to number 14 admin mode and click unlock and it makes everything absolutely hideous so you don't forget that you're in admin mode but this unlocks all the menu items this admin mode also has other features such as in squatting where it can allow you to ignore handicap flags and ignore yardage gaps albeit with a warning message so that way you are able to make changes to squatting that you normally would not be able to do finally we have the ability to refund an event so if we go to setup menu number 13 it's going to warn us to read chapter 11 I will get into this in just a moment so we can select our event number that we are refunding so in my case I am going to refund event 9 we have the option to refund options for shooters with scores only use this if you are not planning on running options for those who have shot and we can also specify that we would like to keep a certain percentage of the target fee or the, a certain amount of the target fee so in this case I am going to keep 250 of everybody's target fee I'm going to go ahead and click start refund it's going to confirm that I am sure I am sure that I would like to do this I'm going to select yes and then I'm going to select refund event it's going to go ahead and process through and now it will display a report where it lists all of our different shooters what has been refunded to them and if they have a score it will not refund their targets I don't think I have many of those in this example so now if we go into our tournament finance report we can see that our event has a CX alert to it and that we have paid out more than what has came in now in the manual we have a section on how to do a event refund in order to balance with the event refund you're going to need the report that was just shown as well as a tournament finance report there are several different ways that you can balance so if you had shooters that have shot you will need to take in the target fees and the target fee refunded and that will become your not refunded variable then your target fees your options in and your total daily fees and you will subtract your not refunded that should balance with the options out column and if you continue reading through this chapter there are several more examples for different refund use cases so those are the major changes that came out in shoot pro 116 I suggest that you also take a look at our change log because we have made quite a few more changes that I didn't have time to list inside this video. We've done a lot of work to ensure that our PITA users have the best experience possible. We've done quite a few bug fixes that I didn't mention here inside this video and we've also done several more things to ensure that common setup issues are prevented or the user is warned about. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at support at shootingsportsoftware.com or call us at 1-801-396-7800. If you like that video, hit the thumbs up button. If you'd like to see when we post new content, hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to receive notifications on when we post new videos, hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching.